welcome to the MMA Fan Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Stu and Blake. Hello and welcome to the MMA Fan Show. I'm one half of your presenting duo. I'm Stu Iffin, joining me as ever, Mr. Blake Harrison. How are you? Very good, mate. Very good. How are you doing? That's how you do an intro. You don't yeah. have to accentuate <laughs> Harrison or anything like that. You can just do it nice and nice and professionally. Yeah, it's all right. It's not going to happen. Your name's too good. Harrison's <laughs> born, but whiffing, whiffing is, there's too many things we can do with it. We need to, we need to keep that, oh, keep up that dear. gimmick. Brilliant. Um, but yes, so we're here to talk about UFC 303 today. The, mm. uh, God, what a journey. What a journey this card has been on. God, yeah. Was Connor Chandler for a long time. Then it was not Connor Chandler. Then it was back to Connor Chandler. Then it was definitely not Connor Chandler. Who was taking over? In steps Alex Pereira. We have just done a... Uh, uh, recording an episode about the Saudi card. Uh, so if you haven't watched that yet, please go and watch that. Robert Whittaker dispatching of Ikram Alaskero very easily, along with some other very interesting things that happened. Kelvin Gastelum and his ridiculous weight situation. Uh, Alexander Volkov getting his hair combed in between rounds. Yeah. And we also spoke about... Spork? We also spork. Spork, keep, man. Keep spoken, mate. Man. Keep spoken. Keep spoken, man. We're going to do this Geordie for the rest of the show. Like, um, uh, we spoke about uh, Conor McGregor's broken toe, yeah. uh, which we had a lovely photo of as well. Uh, and we spoke about the, the slight irony that uh, Alex Pereira has had two broken toes recently mm. and he's coming in to replace Conor McGregor. But if you haven't seen that episode, go and check that episode out. Absolutely. Well, look, before we get on to today's show, let's just talk about our sponsors. Um, Ferocious Fightwear, I will start with first. Now, if you're watching this, you can see the stuff. It looks great. Lots of ace fightwear. Mr. Harrison is holding it up there, little rash guard there. Um, some coordinating shorts. There we go. Uh, and there's also uh, wraps and uh, gum shields. Anything you need to train head over to ferociousfightwear.com. But as sponsors, they've been really generous and they've given you a discount code to use. So head over to Ferocious Fightwear and then when you're just about to put your payment details in, click the discount code and add the words MMA Fan Show 15. That's MMA Fan Show 15. And that will save yourself some money. Um, other than that, um, if you don't train and you just want to show your support for um, the sponsor that is obviously helped us out and uh, and they're a new business as well so just go and give them a follow on the socials because uh, we tag them in all our posts on Instagram so go give them a little a little follow that would be very kind of you our second sponsor is Fat Candy uh, and they are a freeze-dried sweet company sending you freeze-dried sweets uh, so if you remember any of the old uh, kind of penny sweets that you love they will freeze-dry them send them to you into all this beautiful freeze-dried sweet goodness we have here. Stu Whiffin can do a bit of modelling so for us there. There's your pineapple chunks. So you'll always remember like the little pineapple chunks and the cola cubes and that. They literally go four times as big and uh, and they end up becoming this kind of crazy kind of consistent consistency, the way, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah, good man. It's, it looks like you're chewing into like a big monster munch. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Um, Love the way you've just stuck that back in there. That's uh, absolutely disgusting. So I will not be eating any more of the pineapple chunks. Thank you, Stu. Save that one for Ron. Yeah, great. No, genuinely, they are really, really nice. And the skittle, now, yes, you are going to have to eat it now. It's disgusting. Um, but uh, the skittles are absolutely delicious to the point where we've smashed through them incredibly quickly. Uh, the skittles. Stu did the drumsticks all by himself. Uh, so we are getting through them. So Fat Candy, thank you very, very much. And if you want to join us and have a, if you have a sweet tooth, then you can get over to Fat Candy and you can put in the discount code SWEETMMA to get a bit of discount on your freeze-dried sweets. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Let's talk about UFC 303. Oh, mama. Look, we have spoken for the last few weeks in our news episodes, if you haven't uh, watched them, uh, we've spoken a lot about this situation, Conor McGregor, Willie Wonty, 
what would replace it. It's this, how we feel about mm. Alex Pereira coming in and, and Yuri Brahashka coming in on short notice. I mean, I don't want to kind of harp on about the same stuff that people would have heard us talk about over and over again over the last couple of weeks. It I is. can't stop thinking about Conor McGregor and Willie Wonty. Like, Willie Wonty is like a Mexican fighter. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Conor McGregor versus Willie Wonty. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it, it's so impressive that, that, you know, on what was it like, uh, two weeks notice, mm. Alex Pereira, after coming in and saving UFC 300, now comes in and saves UFC 303. We talk about the star power of Alex Pereira now post that event and mm. now after this as well. It's going to be astronomical. He's one of the biggest stars in the UFC at the moment because of stuff like this and because he is just taking every opportunity that comes his way. And big shout out to Yuri Prohashka as well. He took some big strikes in that Alexander Rakic fight and he's coming back to fight just two months later as well. Why do you think Pereira is such a huge star? I mean, his fight style is very exciting, but... And I mean this with the greatest respect. Uh, like as a personality goes, he doesn't jump on the mic and hype himself or hype his fights or kind of. He doesn't even really sort of looks like he plays the game that much. He's very subdued, isn't he? And he's kind Herrera. of yeah. yeah. Um, did I say Yuri? Sorry. No, I yeah. I was reading something on my notes and yeah. basically I wasn't listening to you. Is Rude. basically the point. Rude. Here. Um, You're dead to me since you fucking <laughs> ate that pineapple chunk and stuck it back in the tub. I cannot believe that. Believe that. <laughs> That's absolutely grotesque. You, that is worse now. than a double dip at like a family barbecue or something like that. That is absolutely <laughs> disgusting. But do you think it's it's just his fight style that makes him such a superstar? Because he is a superstar. Now, yes, he's the champ, so that always comes with, you know, profile. But... That face he's got in the picture that we're looking at now, which is the, the press shot from the UFC. Yeah. Like, he just looks pissed off. And he kind of just looks like that all the time. Like, occasionally you see them little videos of him dicking around with Glover that are always quite funny. But he doesn't work it like Sugar Sean, you know, no. or Connor, or the other big stars. Do you know what I'm, do you know what he, I'm, what I'm saying? But he, yes, but he has got... A mystique yes. about him. Do you think that's what it is? Yeah, but it works on so many levels because it is quite loud. When you look at like when he comes in in the, I don't know what to call it, the headdress, the headpiece, mm. like the kind of Aztec warrior type mm. vibe, face pain and all that stuff that he's done. The march to the cage where he's doing that weird little limp and then mm. it ends with the bow and arrow. Mm. Ah, all that. Like he's got gimmicks. Mm. So even though he's not the biggest trash talker or like overly funny or dominating mic time or anything like that, he's got things that make him really stand unique. out and make him really unique. On top of that, he knocks people out and people love that. I mean, we've spoken about in our last episode about the Saudi Arabia card, Sergei Pavlovich knocks people out up until Volkov really mm. uh, recently. But, um, but Sergei Pavlovich before he met Tom Aspinall was on a six fight win streak, all first round knockouts. Mm. So, you know, it, it's not just the knockouts. You've got to have something about you. I think it's a combination of things. I think people love Glover. Mm -hmm. People love Glover and this is Glover's protege. And people get behind him because of that. The Glover story was so great. The fact that he won a title at 67 was absolutely fantastic. Um, the Izzy story is big. The Izzy story was... That was it, wasn't it? Great, such a good narrative, didn't it? Was it was such a great narrative, the Izzy story. And even the fact that he got knocked out by Izzy mm. was like, oh, shit, he's human. Mm. He's human. He can be beat, and he can be beat in devastating fashion. Mm. Um the Izzy rivalry was was fantastic. The fact that he was losing that fight and then came back in the fifth round mm. and won it in their first fight. Then he lost their second fight. Moves up in weight. Okay, okay. Performance with Jan Blahovic. And then uh, beat Yiri. Then, again, Jamal Hill. That. We talked about that on one of the episodes. Yeah, that my yeah, son yeah. does that to me now. Yeah. These kind of meme, these viral moments, whether it be knockouts, getting knocked out. Because even Izzy took his moment against him with the three arrows into yeah. him and lying down in front of the sun. Everyone had an opinion on that stuff. And whether mm. they liked it, they didn't like it. It just added to the story yeah, yeah, of yeah. Alex Pereira. And to achieve all of this, everything he's done in such a short period of time, to do it all in like, what was it, two years? Yeah. Was it How many UFC fights he had? Like... like I don't know. Have a look. Go on, carry look on. up how many fights in the UFC 
Alex Pereira has had. I feel like he's only had like eight or nine fights in the UFC and he's beaten something like five UFC champions. He's won two titles. It's absolutely outrageous, the journey that he's been on. And that, again, it all adds to the mystique, the, the, the knockout, all of these things. First fight in the UFC, November 2021. There you go. Uh, two and a half years. Two yeah. weight world champion. And then, yeah, fourth. Full fight beats Izzy, loses to Izzy, Yan, uh, Yuri, Jamal Hill. He's, and he's fought, as we said, he's fought Jamal Hill, he's fought Izzy twice, he's fought um, Sean Strickland, Jan Blahovic, and Sean Strickland. All UFC champions or former champions. Yeah. Like, that's incredible stuff. It, re it really is incredible stuff. And he, he's got a dance partner in this, in Yuri Brahashka that is also just so much fun. We spoke about him being like a video game character. He's got such a, like, his style is just carnage, it seems, a lot of the time. He gets hit as well, Yuri Brahajka. We saw that Rakic fight where he took some blows yeah. that kept coming. I mean, I think we want to look at the first fight, which I did. I rewatched the first fight that happened oh, okay. between them to, to, to kind of get a story here. But before we get into that... Um, it's almost like what's in better shape? Yuri Prohashka's chin after the Rakic fight or Alex Pereira's toes <laughs> after the Jamal Hill fight? Like, which one is going to go in more compromised? Is it going is, to... Is, I mean, Alex Pereira is not a biggest mover, but he obviously knows what he's doing. Um, but the toes, could they cause a, a problem? Will he be able to kick as well if, he's, if he misses a kick with the toes on that? Or if Yuri... Moves away, checks something, he accidentally hits the toe, something like that. I don't know. Yuri's chin, is it going to be recovered enough from two months ago against Yak Rakic? Even though he didn't get knocked out, he really did take some blows. Mm. And he's now fighting a guy with, I mean, one of the scariest punches. I mean, pound for pound, one of the top, like, most devastating punches we've ever seen in the UFC. I mean, Ngannou's obviously up there. I'm trying to think pound for pound who's, who's the top punchers in the UFC. And uh, Alex Pereira, I'm struggling to think of anyone other than Francis Ngannou that I can think of. There's probably someone that's escaping me. Mm. But yeah, I mean, it, it, unbelievable power that he's got in his hands. And he's technical as well. He knows Pavlovich what he's doing. Pavlovich has got some power. Pavlovich does have some power. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it's really exciting stuff. Uh, so did you watch the first fight at all or anything? Not in the lead up to this, uh, today's no. episode, no. I mean, I'm just, should, should I just run through a few things that happened yeah. in, in that fight? So Alex lands two or three leg kicks in the first round really early on. You can tell Yiri is feeling it. And Alex's leg kick, there's no wind up to it. He just seems to, they don't even look hard. But I remember Daniel Cormier talking about how when he gave him like a 30% leg kick in the build up to that fight, I think it was just as a tester. That didn't even it look was, like 30%. It, it, and DC was like, it really hurt. Like, it really hurts. Um, and you can tell just from like two or three of these calf kicks early on, Yiri can't move properly. Mm. He's, he's really struggling to put proper weight on that front leg. And Yiri's style is all about moving quickly, switching stances. You don't know what attack's coming. He's up, he's down, he's mm. flying knees, spinning around, like whatever it is. It's very, very difficult to pin Yiri down. But if you can really compromises movement. It gives you a real good chance against Yuri Prohashka. And that is sort of what uh, Alex Pereira did in, in the first part of that first round. Yuri then had some, had some success in that round by taking Pereira down. We don't think of Yuri as someone that takes people down, but he did it in this fight. I think people forget that. And he sort of dominated most of that first round. Yuri won the first round on all three judges' scorecards. Again, we talk about the finish, talk about the fact that there was some controversy in the finish because a lot of people feel like maybe the fight should have gone on a little bit longer and the That's ref right. stepped in uh, and pulled Alex off a bit early maybe. One thing, one thing people don't talk about is the fact that Yiri won the first round. Mm. And then in the second round, it was closer, but you could argue that Yiri was winning the second round until mm. he got clipped. And I think uh, I'm just looking at my info that I stuck down now. Um, yeah, no, I, I, that is actually the bulk of what I was wanted to say. That, that is 
Yuri was winning, won the first round and was winning the second round, in my opinion, until he got clipped and then it was all over and the ref pulled him off. We've seen Yuri come back from really devastating shots. We saw the Rakic fight where it just didn't even seem to affect him, even though he was getting hit clean. Dominic Reyes hit him with some big, big shots and he was able to survive. Glover Teixeira hit him, he was able to survive. Yuri is someone that's, that's got that ability to recover. And what I really want from this fight is a definitive finish. I don't want any question about it. If whoever wins this fight, I want it to be definitive because I don't want anyone saying, oh, that's two cracks that Yuri's had at it. And both times you're like, oh, well, maybe the fight could have gone on longer or something like that. But I think people, if you rewatch that first fight, you might go into this thinking slightly differently because I think people remember the finish and they see Alex Pereira as this almost godlike mythical figure in MMA at the moment that's just untouchable. I don't know, man. I, after watching that fight, I feel like Yuri's got more of a shot than I thought because I also think Yuri is a smart guy. As much as he won't have had time to game plan quite right, he will be able to, I think, utilize some grappling. Now, the only thing with that is you, the grappling tires you out more, especially if you're someone that doesn't do it very often. We hear commentators say that all the time, that if you go to your wrestling and you're not someone that's used to wrestling, you get tired really, really quickly. So if Yuri has that kind of game plan and thinks I'm going to go into this and grapple Alex Pereira, which is probably the smart game plan, mm -hmm. he might need to get a finish early or he might gas himself out. Mm. Yeah, five rounds here, obviously. But I, the, the, the thing that I always get, and it's, I know it's his fight style, but it is the fact that his chin's out there. Yeah. And and just on the very fundamentals of that, that he's you know his hands are low a lot of the time, and the size of Pereira's hands yeah. and how hard he hits, it makes it an exciting fight because yeah. you know it's going to be fireworks this fight. But I remember thinking that even in the Rakic fight, I was just thinking, get your hands up. But yeah. it's just not Harry fights, and no. and obviously you know he come good in the in the Rakic fight. But uh, yeah, I think this is a. A fantastic replacement uh, to, to headline the cup. The best the UFC could have done, I think. What? How do you think it plays out? I think Pereira finishes him. Yeah. Like, and I think he finishes him about the third. Right. I, I think that's probably the likelihood that that's what's likely to happen as well. Um, and I think the third's a good shout because I can see Yuri winning like round one, round two, implementing grappling and, and maybe getting tired or something and, be, and again, Pereira just catching him. I feel like... Everything's telling me Pereira will probably win this fight. He, again, he's just on such a roll and mm. he's in such a place with the UFC where it's amazing. I tell you now, I really want Yuri to win mm. because I want to see a trilogy. Because yeah. I think this fight is fun. No matter how many times you do this fight, 10 times, 100 times, whatever, every time it will be a fun fight, I think. And if Yuri wins this, then I think they make the trilogy. And poor old Magomed Ankalaev is just going to be stuck in that room. Um... And we just, yeah, we don't know when Magomed Ankalaev might get his title shot, if he ever gets a bloody title shot. But uh, this fight, three times, I'm, I'm here for that all day long. So I, I would like to see Yuri win, but I expect Alex to win. Okay. This is another last-minute fight. This was meant to be the sphere. This is Diego Lopez going up against Brian Ortega. Lopez with an amazing opportunity here mm. to fight. I think he's Ortega ranked third, and Lopez is ranked something like 14th or something like that. Um, yeah, I think that's the case. Um, this was supposed to be the sphere, but obviously with everything that went on with Connor, they thought we need some extra juice on this card to appease people that have paid the ticket prices for UFC 303, and they brought in... Ortega yeah. v. Lopez. Lopez like, is 14th and yeah. uh, Ortega's third. Yeah, this is going to be like two and a half months earlier than it was meant to be. So there's no game plan really here that's been stuck in place properly for either fighter, I would say. The big worry for me is Lopez is 5'11". He's very, very strong. He's very big for the weight class. Will the weight cut be an issue for him because this has happened sort of last minute? Hopefully not. But I just I worry that maybe he wouldn't have dieted down properly and done all those things to help him with the weight cut. But we will have to see. Um, it's been interesting seeing him in, in tough. He's been in the the firehouse. He's he must yeah. be very tight with Grasso. And, uh, and yes, he, he's one of our coaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, he's 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 been in the corner for all of Team Grasso's 
uh, fights. Right. So he's uh, he's been in the house. And, I normally uh, watch Tough. I haven't seen any of it. But has it been good this series? I've been really enjoying it. Really enjoying it. Um, you know, two-time former guest of the show, Nathan Fletcher's in the house. Mm -hmm. He he come a little short uh, in his fight against. I think his name was, was it Khan, uh, an Australian fighter who's really good. Yeah. Really, really good. Um, you know, now when you see them sort of sneaky peaks of fighters, where yeah, you yeah. think, "Oh yeah, we're going to see him again." And uh, but it did. I did see a post from Nathan saying, "Watch next week's show to find out that all is not what it seems." So Ooh. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Not that is, but but Nathan, you know, he, such a likable guy. Yeah, uh, come across really well, and uh, and and look forward to seeing him back in uh, in the Cage Warriors octagon soon, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 intrigued with with, with uh, Lopez. I think he's uh, a fantastic fighter. Um, and I just hope that he can dream, believe, and make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely reference to Diego Lopez's beautiful tattoo across his chest. Um, yeah, I mean, look, both guys are actually matched up really well. They both have good boxing. Uh, they are both really lethal on the ground. I mean, Lopez nearly submitted Evloev in his debut on a couple of occasions, really. Evloev was was really close to to getting submitted. I think right at the end of the round, there might have been like a knee bar or something like that. And earlier on, there was an arm bar that just wasn't quite cinched in correctly. But uh, to do that to Evloev shows you've got real skill on the ground. Um I don't know. It's kind of like Lopez hits very, very hard and it's big for the weight class, but Ortega has got that great chin. And as we mentioned with the weight cut, is there going to be a situation here where Brian Ortega loses the first round, Lopez is coming at him, and then Lopez with maybe potential weight cut issues, last minute, all that kind of stuff, struggles. And because Ortega's got such an unbelievable chin on him, he rides it out and can then claim a decision or a late finish uh, at the end of the fight. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I think that's that's you know if you, if Lopez does you know gas and uh, um, and makes a mistake, then you know Ortega's yeah. experience and skill set. You know he's his not... game as well. He always comes forward, doesn't yeah. he? Look at that, that Yair Rodriguez fight. Ooh. He was nearly finished Ooh. in the first round, and then came back and smashed Yair up, especially once he got the takedowns in. One thing I would say is he was able to do that to Yair because Yair's not got the best ground game in the world. He's going to really struggle to take someone like Lopez down mm. unless he's incredibly tired. And even when he gets him down, Lopez is great on the ground, really good. And whether he's as good as Ortega, I don't know. We know Ortega's a beast on the ground. But I don't, I don't know. I think it's going to be really... Wherever this fight goes, I think it'd be fun. Even if it's rolling around on the floor, I think they're both really high-level grapplers and we could see some really interesting transitions and scrambles and, and submission attempts. I think that could be really good. But if it's on the feet, I think they're both going to come forward. Lopez is going to try and throw bombs. Ortega can take those bombs, give something back. I think this is going to be a really, really fun fight. Um, go on. Who's got the best hair? Who's got the best... Oh, I think Lopez has got a... We can't see it in this photo, but I think Lopez has got a mullet hiding behind it's there. such a good one. It's a long one as I well. I can't deal with a mullet, man. I just... I don't know. Something about a mullet, it makes me just... A little, little dry heat. Really? I'm like, yeah, I can't handle a mullet, man. Oh, um, I now so, want to see you in a sandwich of him and Ricky Simon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Or Tager all day long. I love the long hair. Yeah. Love it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think... It's really interesting to see what these guys are fighting for mm. because Featherweight is maybe a little bit jammed up at the top. We've got Taporia. There's no fight announced for his first title defence, but you would imagine it's Max Holloway right after the well, time Max has had. And then you've got Volkanovski who deserves an immediate rematch mm. if he wants it. So mm. what's your thoughts? Well, I listened. I'm late to the party, but Friday night when I was driving to work, I listened to Max on Rogan. Uh, All right. that uh, he recorded not long after the uh, the Gaethje fight. And they speak about um, uh, uh, the Spaniard. Why has his name escaped me? Uh, Tapurier. Yeah. And, uh, and he, yeah, it's quite interesting. He said, like, yes, he, obviously Max wants to fight him, but he's like, I don't know who he wants to fight. I think he wants to fight himself because he said, like, he doesn't seem to want... Volk again, he doesn't seem to want me. Mm. So there seems to be quite sort of sketchy there. And from what they were saying, I don't think there's going to be any sort of UFC in, in Spain this year. No. Like, um, but yeah, apparently he sent 
make some massive like rant and he said I literally read the first bit then realised I had to click the word more and then it was like a letter from an ex-girlfriend and he said <laughs> I didn't even read it but uh, but yeah I, I think that division excites me I, I think there's so many potential great fights yeah but I don't know I don't know if Max is going to get that fight uh, I just think it'd be the Volk rematch possibly what possibly. else is there like, There's nothing else out there. Mm. I know they've spoken about Sugar Sean coming up in weight. Too soon. I mean, it's a huge fight if they did... Sean, if Sean beats Mirab and then vice versa, but there'll be a gap. That's between. not bigger than... The, I think Max Holloway is bigger than Sugar Sean. I think his stock is bigger than Sugar Sean's. Yeah, I'd say you're right. I, I'd say I, you're I right. I think... Like, apparently, that was the is first he, time that... Like I think the UFC released the footage of the knockout like instantly yeah. on their socials, which they'd never done before. Apparently, like that's what they did with Sean against Aljo. They oh, released right. it on YouTube the first kind of time they really ever done okay. that um, immediately. But yeah, I don't know. I, I but I guess to go full circle, what this means is for the winner of this fight. I don't think it opens up many more. Certainly not for Ortega. I don't think it offers any more opportunities for for Ortega because okay. I do think that the the top echelons of that division are jammed with too many big money fights, and I don't think okay. Ortega's big money. Um, and I think for Lopez, a win f- jets him right up the rankings, but to some more exciting and tougher fights. Um, which I think he gets to make more of a name for himself and build his profile even more. Well, but go on, what are you thinking? Let's. I, I think they've got to make the Holloway fight. Mm-hmm. I think they have to. I think that. I think that fight's going to happen. Volkanovski deserves for his next fight to be for the belt because of what he's done over the last few years as a champion. However, Volkanovski is also a guy that does not like to sit down for too long. He likes to have a fight. Is there a world in which the winner of this fight fights Volkanovski in a non-title fight? Not interested. Really? You 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 wouldn't watch Lopez versus Volkanovski? I don't want that. I don't want that. Really? Why, why feed Volk to a young and hungry fighter? Well, it depends oh, if Volk what? wants to fight. Like, don't no, get me wrong. I've, no. I think Volk deserves the title shot yeah, because 100%. of what he's done. But if Volk doesn't want to wait around and if Tapuria Max takes ages to put together, if that goes on like... I think it's got to main event something mm. and, you know, maybe... Uh, if Sugar Sean comes up, right? Uh, but he's meant to be fighting... Well, he was meant to... Be, that's the other thing. He's meant to be fighting at the Sphere, but now Connor might be fighting at the Sphere. You probably don't do Connor and Sugar Sean on the same card. I don't know. I don't know. I just think... It'd Imagine be gr- that Connor Chandler and co-main event is Sean v. Uh, Mirab. Mm. Yes, please. I mean, I'd take it. It'd be fantastic. But does the UFC do that? Doesn't Sean sell stuff on his own? Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I think... Can you have a title fight under Connor without, without a belt on the line? I mean, you, you should, because that's how it would work. But Yeah, I think so. I think does so. that not discredit the title? If you're like, the main event... Is not the like Connor's bigger than the belts? Then that's the 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 UFC are officially saying Connor on his own is bigger than an undisputed UFC title. Yeah, but but do you as a business? We all know it is. But do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think you should say that. There's look. There's UFC rules for everybody else, and there's UFC rules for Connor. Yeah, Uh, and ultimately the UFC want to make money, and so you know I'm, I'm I'm sure they do whatever they want, you know, and if Connor. He's headlining a nomad. He's underneath that with a belt. I don't think I give a fuck as long as it just brings the money in and sells the pay per views. Um, but yeah, and I, do I want to watch Volk Ortega? No, nah. no, nah. no. Fair enough. I mean, we saw a fantastic fight the first time around. I wouldn't. I wouldn't he be opposed him. to seeing it again. He's beat him, and um, he's he's done enough to get that that title that, shot. That is the only like, thing that stops me wanting it because he's done enough. Don't fight a Diego Lopez like. Because you've got no need to. You've 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 had them tough fights. You've got yeah. to where you've got. You've beaten Max. You know. You. I I I think. I don't know if if Tapuria 
for some reason, some fight presents itself that isn't Max uh, or Volk. I don't know. Does Max fight Volk for the BMF? That doesn't... I, I'm not massively into that. Mm. I mean, they fought three times. But that fight... And I um, don't... Yeah. That I don't. fight's going to happen at some point. I, I think... I think where we, what we're going to see with Max is if he doesn't get that Tapuria fight... I think he fights someone at lightweight for the BMF. I, I think he sits tight and he sees who wins out of Conor Chandler. Cause I think, well, he no. wants Conor. Yeah. I mean, if you're Conor, though, you're probably going for welterweight rather than BNF, but maybe. But I, 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 I think that there's, you know, he's got a win over Max. And I think, yeah, you know, Max, we well, said as much on Rogan. You know, that he'd, yeah. he'd love to fight Connor again. But everyone yeah. wants to fight Connor, don't they? Everyone wants to fight Connor. <laughs> so before we wrap this up, who wins this fight? Diego Lopez, Brian Ortega, who wins? Diego Lopez. Yeah, do you reckon? Yeah, I think he's just got a lot of eyes on him and it's a big opportunity for him and I think he's going to pull something off. Oh, I was going to say Diego Lopez thinking you were going to say Ortega yeah. and now because you've said Lopez, it made me... I love Ortega. Well, don't get yes. me wrong. I really like <laughs> Ortega, uh, Ortega. But um, I'm going to drive believe and he's going to make it happen. Mm, I, you could be right. I mean, if it was five rounds, I'd say maybe Ortega. Mm. But because it's three, I'm, I was sort of leaning Lopez as well. Mm. Maybe we're crazy. But I do really like Diego Lopez. Mm. So, yeah, go on then. Let's go Lopez. Right, next fight. Anthony Smith versus who's he fighting now? Oh fucking hell! Um, you got all upset earlier. I didn't was you? well upset about this. <laughs> I had done loads of work. I've had to delete most of it, but I've done loads of work on yeah. Olberg versus Smith. I'd mm. watched a few fights. I, I, I'd looked into his record and all that kind of stuff, and I was really like looking forward to it. Mm. I was. I really wanted to know how good is Olberg. I thought this was a fantastic test for him. Really great. I mean, Olberg, six fight win streak, five finishes, four in the first round. This would have been his toughest test and it was a great step up and it would show his Anthony Smith still that guy to, to, to stop these up and coming guys. Can Smith put a run together? I don't think so, but you never know. It just would have been a really great contest and a really, we would have really found some answers about Carlos Olberg and where he really stands and, and what his ceiling might be and all those things. I was really, really excited about it. And for whatever reason, I can't remember what it is, some kind of injury, Olberg is out. This fight was originally Jamal Hill versus Khalil Roundtree. Then it was Jamal Hill versus Carlos Olberg. Then it was Carlos Olberg versus Anthony Smith. And now it's Anthony Smith versus Roman Delize, who's stepping up from middleweight to fight at light heavyweight. Oh, two, two fire losing streak. Oh, my God. Do, do, what does, a crazy Does anybody journey. care about this fight? I don't. I, I mean, just because... Is that just because you've done a bit of prep work and you just feel pissed mainly, off? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> mainly, yes. Mainly, yeah. Um, but no, look, Delize, I don't think, is a light heavyweight. He's a middleweight. So this is just kind of a fight for the sake of it right like just to, to so that the fight actually happens rather than it falling out um yeah i'm just not i don't feel like the lee's has got a future at light heavyweight i don't think he was plan was to step up to light heavyweight as far as i'm aware maybe i'm wrong anthony smith a win over the leads a does it do much for me in terms of smith and what he could do going forward no not really um i i just can't get excited about anthony smith um, like um, when he when he come through, I was like everybody, but that was quite a while ago now, and uh, and so obviously he's just got a recent win, uh, first rank uh, Gilly over Petrino, uh, and he's got a win over Ryan Spam. But we're looking at lot, recent losses to Khalil Rantrig, um Johnny Walker, uh, Ankalaev. The Ankalaev one was a weird one, but yeah. it was it was. Um, lost to Rakic, lost to Glover. Obviously, there's there's wins in between there to Jimmy Crew, Span, and and Devon Clark. But you know, it feels to me that whenever he comes up against serious, serious boys, like he just don't deliver. That's why the Olberg fight was so good. Yeah, because I do think of Anthony Smith now, and there's no shame in this as being like sort of like a gatekeeper to the top Are these, ten. Are these your Olberg notes? Maybe, yeah. 
and just rehashing them. Um, I've got to get them out somehow. I've done the work. Um, not gonna just get, I'm not going to get that time back in my life. Let's just imagine that fight still going ahead. <laughs> what we <laughs> just just going? Can we just like, <laughs> delete the delete day picture and put up all um, Oh, dear. But yeah, so... I don't know, man. Yeah, how old do you, like, you've probably got it up because I know you're on tapology at the moment. Do you know how old Anthony Smith is? Let's have a look. No, don't look, don't look. That's the whole thing. I don't want you to look. Don't wait. You're scrolling. I can see you scrolling. I'm not, I'm you're not. cheating. I'm not you've cheating. You've just done it. You just looked. I didn't look. Um, I can't see his age. Uh, how old do you think he is? Uh, 37. Okay, I, I thought he was like 38, 39. He's only 35. And All again, right. light heavyweight, yeah. there's not, you know, but it's, it's the thing about there's there's age in years and then yeah. there's age in five, five years. years. Yeah. And this is his 57th fight. Mm. 57 fights. That's a lot of training, a lot of sparring, a lot of fighting. Mm. So... I just don't know. I, I, I don't know that there's... It sounds horrible to say about someone that's only 35 in those higher weight classes, but I don't, I don't know that there's much more for Anthony Smith other than being that gatekeeper. But there's nothing wrong with that. He can still earn good money. He's obviously got a half-decent contract. He's a, a, a star that the UFC enjoy. They can put him in main events across, the, across America, whatever. Um, he can co-main event things. He's a name... Uh, yeah, he, he presents for the UFC, all he's that great stuff, at that. and he's good at it. So, mm. yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, I, I think that's a good career to be a, a top ten, top fifteen guy, is, gatekeeper type thing. Is this card not that great? No, I quite like the card. Mm. I, I would have preferred it if it was Smith v. Allberg. Smith v. Delete now is just a bit of a. I really don't care about that fight, but I think. Well, do you know what? Let me take that back. I think it's a good main card. Mm. I think the prelims leave a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. But then this card, we can talk about this in a little bit of the prelims, actually, because I've not got a huge amount to say about the prelims. But there's a couple of fighters on the prelims, like, that are fighters that the UFC might want to push. And so they've got them under the spotlight of the Conor McGregor card, in order for people to go, oh, who's that? We've we've watched him because everyone watched the Conor McGregor card. And then they can build a star. Uh, I'll talk about it now. One of the number one names on that list for me was Peyton Talbot. Peyton Talbot is against uh, Yanis Gamori. And Talbot's a great prospect uh, on the prelims. 13-0, 25, has looked really good. He beat um, Cameron Simon, Drickus uh mate, in his last fight. Really good fight. And Cameron Simon's a good fighter as well. Um and he seems really together. He's got a good head on his shoulders. Definitely someone to watch going forward. Um, and I say, I think, I think the UFC put Peyton Talbot on this card to showcase, to showcase him under the Conor McGregor kind of banner and, um, and get eyeballs on him. But unfortunately, it's, it's not worked out because of the, the broken toe situation. But, um, and, and I'd say Joe Pfeiffer is maybe another one of those as well. Joe Pfeiffer, he lost to Jack Clemanson in his last fight. But Joe Pfeiffer's looked good. Dana White contender series guy who they always enjoy and uh, has got a few good knockouts and stuff. And he's fighting uh, Marc-Andre Barrio in an interesting fight. Barrio can be a bit stifling and, and maybe doesn't always put on the best fights. Mm. But if Joe Pfeiffer beats him, then that, mm. that shows he, you know, he's come back from the Manson lost really well um, and he's again a fighter that I think Dana really likes and, and could do well with let's, yeah, let's... Look, th this is the fight now I've just pulled yeah. up a picture of MVP and Ian Gary for me aside from Pereira Yuri uh, uh, do you know what I'm probably more excited about this than I am the Pereira fight I yeah. think this fight like I'm always excited to watch Ian Gary fight yeah. because it feels that the hate has been on mass towards him lately uh, well, for quite a long time now. Um, but he always gets in the octagon and he always shuts everyone up and delivers like really interesting performances. The fact that MVP has come into, finally got to the UFC uh, and, and he's looking great, I think this is going to be like both of these fighters need to win this fight to kind of hold their place and really keep their, like, for, for me, this could be like, the we're seeing a very very young Ian Gary just kind of making a name for himself. Doesn't really do anything 
that wrong inside the octagon. You know, he seems to no. have been pretty perfect in his, 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 um, in his scraps so far. So do you want to derail that trajectory? MVP is a, is a fighter that I'd love to have seen in the UFC five years ago. Yep. Um, you know, he's... You know, he, he's not as young as Ian Gary. And, I, and I'm, again, I say this with the greatest respect. He looked great against Kevin Holland. And, and I, you know, what a fucking lovely guy. He came in here and oh, he was he yeah. was such a nice dude. Um, I don't really want to see... I, I can't wait to see his fight, but I don't want one of them to lose because I'm a fan of both of these fighters. But I think it's a loss for MVP against Ian Gary, I think is not great. Like I think that would really kind of subdue the hype of MVP in the UFC, you know, that, you know, don't get me wrong, he's, 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 he's fighting Ian Gary where there's a lot of eyes and ears on it, but we know that Ian Gary wanted to be on this card because Connor's on the card. Um, Originally wanted to fight Colby yeah. as well. It's really not worked out the way Gary Gary wanted it to, is it, really? Oh, I'm, I'm intrigued to know, you know, for all of the, the madness and all of the, the trash talking and all of the... And I say the trash talking, the trash talking about him and his family and, and, and his wife. And but I wonder what the UFC's view of Ian Gary is and like and how they see him. And, you know, do they see him as a future champ? Do they see him as somebody that they need to kind of find really exciting fights for and nurture? And like, I don't know. I, I think they like Ian Gary. Mm. I think the one thing you want in this sport is for people to care doesn't matter if they want to see you get knocked out or they want you to do the knocking out. They, the sport, they, they need people to care. And people care about Ian Gary, whether it's they care enough to throw hate at him or want to see him knocked out, whatever it is, they care. And the UFC like that. And I think, I think a win for either guy here might see them in a, a, a title opportunity. You just, I mean, it's, it's very possible. I know Shavkat's out there, but I think Jack Della Maddalena is He's out. injured. Mm. Yeah. So there's a bit of a, what's going to happen after the Bilal Leon fight. But I mean, there's talk of like, whether Islam would go up in weight. I'd rather see Islam fight Armin Sarukin. That's the fight for me. Um, but I don't know, man. I think, I think it's really interesting, this fight, because I, th I agree with you. I think this is arguably the most intriguing fight on the entire mm. card. I feel like it's been forgotten about. I know that there's a lot going on with the Connor thing and Alex stepping in and all that kind of stuff and then Allberg and all that. But for me, this is the most intriguing fight on the card. And I, I, I feel like hardly anyone wait, is talking about wait it. Wait till media day. Well, that's what I was going to say. Wait till a minute. You look no through... one. No one else is going to be chatting that much at press conferences and stuff. Alex doesn't do much chatting. Yuri doesn't do that much chatting. I mean, they'll give you sound bites. They'll be interesting stuff, but they're not going to be, you know, trash talking loads or anything like that. I don't think Smith and the lead say is going to get like that at all. I think that'll be the press are going to have no questions from because they don't no. care. Exactly. And then what other fight did we talk about earlier? I've already Ortega kind of... and or, uh, Ortega and again. I, I don't see either of those guys being like big talkers Look. really I think they'll be respectful so these two guys when the press come Wednesday out, they've got the opportunity to make this week all about them and, and I think will. they could take it and they, they could take that opportunity because the press are going to sit there and we've been in them you know them, them press meetings we've seen how they work and you know you look down your, your roster who, who's going to be there today who you can ask questions to you look at that and it's like right where am I going to get my soundbite where am I going to get something that's going to go viral it's gonna be chatting to these boys, and and they've been, they've, you know, they've been digging each other a little bit, and but obviously with with respect. But I think come Wednesday we're gonna start seeing them chat some 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 interesting stuff. And I think again on the night when people are going right, okay, you know, even the casuals that probably ain't even gonna watch the prelims are gonna watch that main card. If this opens the main card, I don't know where this is going to be. As mm. It looks at the moment like it might be. I think it might be. Um, people are going to be like, I'm not missing that. Yeah. And I think they're going to, yeah, I, I, and I think this is going to deliver. Who wins, Blake Harrison? Well, I still want to talk more about this fight in terms of like, do you, I feel like MVP might be Ian Gary's toughest fight to date. Do you agree with that? 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I who's, think, who's tougher than MVP that Gary's fought? You think Daniel Rodriguez or Duncan? I, I think so. Neil Magny is he, he, he's a fantastic fighter. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and I think, you know, and a very well rounded fighter, uh, a rangy fighter. Yep. Um, and, and obviously, Ian Gary. Obviously, not the skill set of MVP. Very, though. very different fight yeah. style. Um, but, you know, we saw Ian Gary demolish him. Yeah. Like and and almost make it look easy. Um, well, he did make it look easy. Yeah, didn't he? yeah. Um, MVP, you know, is a very unique. Has got a very unique fight style, um, and so I'm interested to know Ian Gary's been sparring. Mm. I'd like to know he's been brought in. Uh, we know uh, because he reached out to us. We know who Ian Gary's been. Uh, sorry, who MVP's been sparring. Um, so we won't say that on air. I think there was socials put out. Was there? I think so. Yeah. Can we uh, dob him in? It was. Uh, <laughs> can we say? I'm sure there's socials out there, aren't yeah. there? I'm sure I've said Reese McKee. He yeah. Was, he was fighting with Reese McKee. Yeah. Uh, who is good? Good fighter. Not the level of Ian Gary, mm. but he's a very good fighter, and we enjoyed having Reese McKee on the show. Um, yeah, I don't know. In my head, I was thinking MVP might be Gary's toughest fight to date. I think but I was not, just I, trying I to. I'm not disagreeing no, yeah, yeah. with you, but I just no. wanted to like not discredit Neil Magny because but I do I was, think he's. You know, I think that's a good shout. I wasn't really thinking about Neil Magny enough, and I think that's that's a good shout. But I think that also I'm trying to think: is Gary MVP's toughest fight to date? Because MVP has fought Douglas Lima when Douglas Lima was was doing better things as like a Bellator champion and stuff like that. He suffered his own uh, his. First loss, I believe, to, to Douglas Lima with that thing where he kicked his leg out and uppercutted him in one kind of swift movement. Logan Storley as well is really wrestle heavy. So stylistically, very difficult for MVP. And I believe that was a split decision that some people thought MVP should have won. And those are his only two losses. So I don't know. It's really interesting to see whether... Gary is MVP's toughest fight. Is MVP Gary's toughest fight? And I think that always makes a fight really intriguing to go, oh, we don't know which way this one's going to go. Um, I think it's really going to be interesting to see what kind of game plan Gary puts out as well. Because as we've discussed on the show before, as much as you would love to see just a striking battle between these two, and that would be fantastic, if I'm in Gary's corner, I'm like, grapple. Push him up against the fence. That's my one worry, actually. Could this end up in a Ian Gary pushing MVP against the fence, keeping him there, foot stomp, shoulder strikes for as long as possible? And it just makes the fight slightly boring. That is my only concern about this fight is, is, is if Gary's game plan is to do something like that and MVP can't get away enough. I can't help but think Ian Gary's ego will be, oh, I want to strike. Oh, see, I think Ian Gary's intelligence outweighs his ego. I think he's a smart boy, and I think he would go. I'm not saying he's not smart, but I'm, I'm no, saying but I, think I, I don't think he, he wants. Want to, he's not going to want a boring three round fight. I think he'll take a boring three round fight if he wins it. Really? Yeah, I do. I, I think he's he knows that winning is the most important thing, and his team knows winning is the most important thing. And you make one little error of judgment, one little mistake with someone as dynamic, as explosive, and technical as MVP, you're going to sleep. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I think it's going to be safety first for, for Ian Gary and, and maybe it's going to be grapple heavy. Who winning is best for the division? Oh, that's a good question. For me, I think it's Michael Venom Page. Oh, I didn't think he was going to say that. I think Ian's so young, he's going to have a couple of chances. He, he, he's, he, he's, Ian Gary can come back from a loss pretty easily. He's very well rounded. He's only just he's only improving. He's always getting better. I think Ian Gary is is a really talented fighter that's, as I say, young enough to keep improving. So I think he can become a champion even with a loss mm. to MVP. If MVP loses It's a long way back to get that title shot. It might be a long way back because he's only winning the UFC. And let's be honest, regardless of how great he was in Bellator, to a lot of fans only what you do in the UFC matters. Mm -hmm. And that means he's only got one win and then he's lost to Ian and he needs to come back. And the welterweight division as well, it's quite wrestle heavy. Mm. There's a lot of guys like Burns, Brady, Usman, uh, Shavkat can do it. Um, I don't know, the list probably goes on but and on. the guy but, at the top. Yeah, but Leon can grapple, but yes. like, But yeah, he's more of a striker. And that's the thing. That's why I think 
for the best thing for the division for me now, especially as a British fan, is if MVP wins, I think there is a strong chance that you could get Leon versus MVP. If Leon beats. If Leon Valau. beats Valau, which I'm expecting him to. The only problem with that is MVP versus Leon Edwards has got to happen in the UK. And I don't think there's a UK card before March of next year. So you'd have to wait a long time for it. But it's doable. Mm. But you'd have to wait a long time. And where does that put Shavkat? Shavkat's probably earned a title shot way more than either of these guys. Mm. Should he be getting it? Now, if Bilal beats Leon, I think they do the Shavkat fight. Because I think yeah. that, I don't think the UFC like Bilal that much. They're not going to want him to roll onto that belt. No. And Shavkat is someone that is a bit more marketable, I think. Because Leon even though get he doesn't... Rematch, though. I don't know because I don't think the UFC are huge Leon fans. I think they've become better since Headshot mm. Dead and the Head Kick with Usman and all that. But his fight with Colby wasn't the most exciting in the world. The second fight with Usman wasn't, or third, I should say, wasn't the most exciting in the world. Um, Pieced up Nate for a... Yeah, but again, it wasn't the most exciting no. you know, from what I remember. And so... You know, I, I don't think the UFC... I think the UFC can see that Leon Starr is growing mm. and he's becoming more marketable, particularly in UK, Europe yeah. and all that stuff. And he's got... His personality is coming out. We're seeing more of Leon Edwards in yeah. interviews lately. He's said some funny stuff about Bilal and stuff like that. So I love Leon Edwards. I really want him to hold on to that belt for a long, long time. But um, I think if he loses, I think it, the UFC would probably do Bilal Shavkat and maybe the winner of this fight's Leon. Yeah, I um, bet that's... That's pretty much in my head. Zone. Yeah. But hopefully Leon wins, in which case, does he have to fight Shavkat or does he fight one of these boys? Because I think the beef with Ian Gary is real. Mm. They don't like each other. There'll be a lot of trash talk and, and, and stuff in that fight. And I think they'll get under each other's skin a little bit. And, and that, as particularly, I think Ian will get under Leon's skin a bit. And I think that will be interesting. Uh, and the build up to that will be fun. And if it's MVP, uh, you know... British Civil War fight, Birmingham v. London. I think that that'll be an interesting one as well, especially if they can do it in the UK, in, in England. Yeah, I've got to be honest. I, I, I think uh, I think Shavkat trumps them at the moment. Yeah. I, I think so. Let's, all right, let's say MVP flying the knockouts, Ian Gary. In like the first round. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. But do you, it's, yeah, yeah, no, I get yeah, it, I get I, it. I feel like you're right, you're right. But Shavkat will be there going. The Shav, Shavkat knocks on the room and Ankalaev lets him in. Come in, mate. And he's <laughs> sitting here with me, mate. I've been in here for freaking years. Oh dear, yeah. I mean, I don't think so because I think Shavkat's. He has earned it. He's more exciting than Ankalaev. Oh, for sure. Like, for sure. Um, yeah, uh, but. I don't know. Like you say, like we're looking at, you know, a pitch and arrow, two of the most, you know, charismatic, fun, interesting, marketable fighters. Yeah. And and the UFC is a business, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah. And and, you know the fact that MVP could fight Leon I'd would be insane. Fight. It would be and great. like um and like you say, all of that beef with of Ian Gary turning up at Renegade and it, yeah. you know, and it ruffling feathers and him basically from what we gave, got told to leave. Yeah. Um, the narrative's building, isn't it? It and, is. Uh, yeah. I'd rather watch those fights than Shavkat versus Leon. Maybe because I'm slightly protective of, of Leon a little yeah. bit because I do feel like Shavkat is maybe the, the best welterweight in the world at the moment. Mm -hmm. But yeah, be, be interesting to I, see. I, I, I think if, I definitely agree that if Bilal beats Leon, they get they him in with Shavkat Shavka quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, because Bilal is a very bland champion. Yeah. You know, if the UFC don't view Leon as being super charismatic and exciting, people yeah. love Leon though. The UK yeah. loves Leon. Yep. Bilal just... And it shouldn't be this way. He's, he's a f fucking great fighter. Yep. But, you know, he's only just got out of that room. Because he's just not yeah. doesn't scream fireworks. It doesn't, and I, and I I think there's a very strong possibility that that fight is a bit dull. Uh, speaking of dull, um, <laughs> one, one of the other fights on this card to wrap up the main card, 
Mara Bueno Silva taking on Macy Chasson. Uh, women's bantamweight is not in a good place at the moment. We are desperate for Kayla Harrison to sort of come in and, and have a title fight and do the business and really wake this division up because Kayla's not only a really phenomenal fighter, but she's good on the mic. Mm. She, uh, she's got a phenomenal story as well, some tragedy in there and all that stuff. But... Um, Chasson Bueno Silva, I mean, unfortunately, could be a number one contender fight. We don't know. I mean, we're expecting it to be Kayla Harrison, but Chasson ranked seven, Bueno Silva ranked third. Chasson's only two and two in her last four fights. She's got a win over Pani Kianzad and Norma Dumont, losses over Pennington, who's the champion, and Arena Aldana, which was a weird one where Aldana did that kind of up kick that hit her in the liver. It was a very, very strange end to a fight. Um, Bueno Silva coming off the loss to Pennington in a really bad performance. Like, mm. I believe she was winning that first round quite comfortably, but then just seemed to gas out. I don't know what happened to her. I can't remember where that fight took place, if it took place at altitude or what was going on, but Bueno Silva just really crumbled in, in that fight. Uh, she's good in the clinch. She has got some good submissions, but yeah, she, she was not good in that Pennington mm. fight at all. And I think a, a lot of people found that quite surprising. Um... Yeah, I just, given the record of Chasson, I, I don't think this should be a number one contender fight. Um, and obviously, Kayla is the main person we're hoping that could reignite this division. I mean, the one thing Chasson's got in her favour is she's 5'11". She's going to be about five inches taller than Bueno Silva. Mm. And she is a good fighter. You know, she's strong. She's rangy. She can use her, 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 her striking really well. But... I think the best thing for the division here is for Silver to win mm. because it kind of maybe makes you go, oh, the Pennington fight was a blip. There was something wrong there. We can go again and maybe... What what I think is probably going to happen is Kayla's going to fight Pennington at some point before the end of the year in probably a co-main event of a big card, maybe the John Jones card in November or something mm. like that. And then uh, Kayla goes on a big run. I hope so. Yeah, that's what we want. I mean, ideally, you want Cyborg to come back and fight Kayla and oh. Nunes to come back and fight Kayla. They're the, they're the fights yeah. that you really want to see. Bantamweight is in a little bit of trouble at the moment in terms of keeping the fans' interest. You know, women's strawweight, always well, good truly, fun. Women's flyweight, great. They're but, clearly trying to salvage that division a bit by yeah. putting that on this card at that place like, yeah. because I think it's like, let's get some eyes on these. Like, yeah, because they might, if there's something wrong with Kayla, the, this is probably... The, the next time, although if Bueno Silva wins and Pennington's still the champ, you probably don't run that back straight yeah. away. So I don't know. It's in a bit of a mess, Manton Wait, We're just waiting for Kayla to come in and sort it out. Look, you mentioned some of the fighters that, uh, that you also think the UFC are um, trying to show. Because I just want to uh, shout out as well um, that Cub Swanson's fighting Andre Philly on this card. Yeah. Um, I think it's a fun fight. Yeah, you know, for sure. Like, uh, a couple of legends there. Yeah. And, uh, and, and just through... Being in the room at one of the recent uh, media days in, in London when Andre fought, um, fought um, Nate, Nathaniel, uh, Nate Wood. Nathaniel Wood, um, just seemed like such a nice guy. Uh, and, and Cub uh, Swanson seems like such a nice bloke yeah, as well. Yeah, and, and, and I think, you know, Cub's got to be coming towards the end of his career now. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm just think this could be a a really fun fight between two great featherweights. So I'm looking forward to that. For sure. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to that fight as mm. well. I, I hope it's, I, I hope it's one of those ones where it, it's sort of a, a back and forth fun fight and yeah. not just, I do, I do worry for Cub Swanson of late. I, I hope he's not too past it or something. Andre Feely does hit hard. He's got mm. massive hands. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that fight, but I, I've got slight nerviness about Cub Swanson. I hope he's going to be all right. But, uh, but yeah, as you say, two guys that have been in the UFC for a decent chunk of time, particularly Cub Swanson. He's in the Hall of Fame for that great fight with uh, Korean Superboy that we absolutely love. Um, so, yeah, that hopefully that fight will be a banger. Um, Michelle Watson Gomez and uh, Gillian Robertson are fighting. That's going to be very grappler versus striker. Mm -hmm. I think Robertson being, uh, I think she's got the most submissions victories of any woman in the UFC. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so she could add to that streak. And Michelle Watson Gomez, obviously, really fun striker on the on the feet. Um, 
Ricky Simone's on the card against Vinicius Oliveira. I can't say I know much about Vinicius Oliveira, but Ricky Simone we're big fans of. He was on the show yeah. uh, a few years ago. Never in boring fights. Never in boring fights, really. And Charles Jourdain as well is someone I always mm. really like. Don't know much about Gene Silva, but uh, Charles Jourdain is a really fun fighter that uh, could kick off those early prelims really well. And Andre Arlovsky. How old is Andre I've now? I've just checked. 67. <laughs> 67. <laughs> Andre Arlovsky still going. He's going to be up against Martin Budai. Um, yeah, there's some fun fighters on this card. There's not... I, I, on the prelims, I would say there's fun fighters that are, could be interesting. Not necessarily fun matchups outside of the swanson Feely fight. But hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully there's loads of fun fights on there. And you can watch all of them fights this Saturday. It goes down at the T-Mobile Arena. Before you go anywhere, we really should mention something very, very important, though. Yes. Because hopefully it's been announced now. Please don't go anywhere. This is a very important announcement. Uh, we should be doing a live, streaming live draw for for a Cage Warriors prize fighter, which is happening July 20th in London. It's a fantastic tournament idea that Cage Warriors are putting on. Six fighters will go into the draw. There will be two semi-final fights and one reserve fight. We don't know which fighter is going to be in which fight, who's fighting who, until we do the draw, hopefully this Wednesday afternoon. So keep a lookout on the socials. We will give you the information. I'm sure Cage Warriors will put it out there as well. And you can tune in for the live draw of those fights and it's a really exciting tournament. You've got six fighters in the bantamweight division. The winner of the tournament gets £50,000, which at this level, at Cage Warriors, is a huge astronomical sum of Life money. Life-changing, mate. Life-changing. Not only that, they will get a shot at the bantamweight champion after that as well. And not only that, but they have the chance to add £20,000 to their purse by predicting how they win the fight. A really lovely little yeah. nugget that they're throwing into the tournament. If you predict your semi-final fight correctly, you know, I'm going to win by the left hook. Boom, you get it. £10,000 in the bank. You move on to the final. You go into the final. I'm going to win this fight by guillotine choke. Boom, guillotine choke. You've won 50 grand. A chance to fight the champion. And you've walked away with an extra 10,000. So 70,000 pound all in all. Really exciting uh, tournament that Cage Warriors are putting on July 20th. And we will hopefully be doing the draw here in studio live on Wednesday. So do check that out. Absolutely. Other than that, we'll see you next time for, I guess it will be post 303. We'll be talking about how it all went down. Post 303. Yeah, that's it. And tune in for the live stream, if we get that working. Because we're basically our mission, don't know how to work technology. So. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. 